Hi, Crafty Patty here. I'm very excited to get going on another painting. And as you know, if you've watched any of my other videos, I'm an always go big or go home. I needed a painting to put above a bed in one of my bedrooms. So I want to do a beach scene because I love the beach. These are going to be techniques I haven't actually tried together. So I figure I might as well film it. If it turns out exactly what I want and I really love it, then I've got a great video for you so you can do it too. If it doesn't turn out, well, we'll see. When I'm painting a large painting like this, I use Flood Floetrol as my pouring medium. And this is what thins out my paints and then I add water. So I'll show you one mixing of my paints and all my other paints are done the same way, except for a very concentrated paint like the Opus Fluid Acrylics. These are very highly pigmented, so you don't need as much color. So what I do is I add my Floetrol into my bottle first, add the paint until it's the color that I like, and then I stop. And then for Liquitex Basic Paints, it's a little bit of a heavier paint than the Flow Acrylics. Then I will use the same amount of Flood Floetrol as paint and then thin with water. So let's do one and we'll show you how I do it. So here's my two ounces of Floetrol. And then I'll come up to my four ounces. And I'll come up to my five with water. I'll shake this up and see if I've got the consistency I want. And then if not, then I can add some more water. Now normally I would just leave it in the squeeze bottle, but you can't see for demonstrating purposes. So I'll just pour it into here. So you can see the consistency. So right now it's still very thick. It's not even dripping off of the stir stick. So I'm gonna add some more water. And what I'm looking for is a steady stream off the stir stick. When it drops back into the paint, it's not forming a mound on the top, it's sinking into the paint. I'm going to start with doing the sand section first. So it'll be a three section painting, sand, ocean, sky. And this first section I'm going to attempt to do a swipe on it. I'm going to leave all the colors that I'm using in the description box below, so I'm not having to take too much time on just explaining all the colors. So let's just start with um, some sandy colors. I believe this was actually desert sand. I do have a little tiny bit of uh, gold here, so I thought that might look pretty in the beach as well. Two different types of gold, I got a metallic and a bronzy gold. And again, I'll, I'll write down the names.
Use up some of my runoff to fill up any holes. Now I'm going to come in with some black on the edge here and I'm going to use the piece of plastic sheeting and I'm going to pull it across and do a swipe. Wish me luck. Just going to clean this off. Actually, maybe I won't because I want this not to be as black, but I'm, it's doing what I want it to do. I want it to form all these little pockets to make it look like rocks on the beach. So I'm going to put just a little tiny bit more black down here so I can grab it so it pulls through. And I'm going to come in with this paint and go right on top of that and see what happens. here so I'm just going to pull that through. Well that's still working and uh, bringing up more cells I'm going to let it be and now I'm going to come up and I'm going to start to work on the sky. For the sky I've used the Liquitex Basic and it is the light blue permanent and I've added white to get this color here. I'm also going to be using some white and a bit of Payne's Gray and I'm going to do a dirty pour now. have a large table so I'm just going to grab some paper towels just to catch the runoff that comes off those corners there. All right, my sky. Just come in some more blue. It's always darker further up in the sky and lighter as you get closer. And just a very small amount of black just to make it look like there's a little bit of cloud formations. And I'll tip this just slightly because I don't want to disturb my sand too much. So We'll just try tipping just slightly. I'll put it back in and I'm going to swipe across the other way again. Let's 
some more white on the bottom here. And I'm going to go across again. plastic is, is picking up the paint here, so I'm just going to come across once more. And one more swipe of white. There's a nice, soft, blended sky and an easy way to do it. So I'll just clean up my edges again. I've got such a nice, soft, blue sky. I'm looking at this and it's just too dark. I like how the black form the cells, but I think I'm going to come in with some white and I hope I don't ruin it, but this is what you just have to do and you have to just try stuff. So right in here is where it's really dark. So I'm going to just add a bit of white through here. this side because this is the lightest and wanted more light. So I'm going to start from here and drag it through. So it's nice and sandy down in here, a little bit of gray coming through, which is fine. That looks pretty natural for a beach, but it's getting gray here. And I hope I don't muddy it too much, but I'm going to come back in here with just the solid sand colors and see if I can lighten this up in this area. But I'm going to clean up this first. So I've mixed up some more of my sand color. Instead of pulling through with the swipe with the black, I'm going to try to pull through with the lighter color here. And we'll just see if I totally ruin this. Oh my gosh. Still black in here. Well, of course it's black. I put black paint in it, silly me. Once more for good luck.
Now all horizon lines are straight. You don't want it all messy like the sand. So I don't know if this is gonna work, it's just an experiment. So I've measured in at say 10 or yeah, 10 and a half inches, and I've taped a piece of string here, and I'm gonna tape it to the other end. So I've come back and I've taped it at 10 inches because my white paint isn't quite at that mark. So I'm measuring down 10 inches. And now I've got my straight line and I know exactly where my paint needs to go. Now you want your dark colors up here fading down into the lighter blues. So I'm going to start putting my darkest color into my dirty pour. And again, I'll, I will leave the colors in the description box below if you want to do this exact painting. I don't know if you will or not, but if you do. It's going to take probably two dirty cups to get this done. So this will be my darker colors, this will be my lighter colors. I'm going to start with that dark. So I'm going to start in about the middle because I'll have lots more to get down to here because I've only got a little bit of paint in here. So I'm going to just start here. Got a little tiny palette knife here, and I'm just gonna force it right up to my my string. And I'm not going to do a tip on this one because I don't want to disturb my other sections. So I'll just continue along here and just blend it all together. Now we're going to mix up some of our lighter shades now and bring it down into the sand. I'm going to start with some white. And here's our really pretty bohemian blue. And some turquoise. Last color we used there just to blend it in. So now we're going to start up this last section where we left off. I'm 
and come in with a little scraper like this and then I won't be getting in the way of everything else and see if we can blend it that way. Okay, I'm going to very carefully remove this string. Not bad, I think that works. I mean, there's a little bit of feathering, but I don't mind that look. I think we'll be okay. Now I'm gonna look for some natural areas that look like wave patterns, and there's one right here, so I'm gonna add a bit of white to this. That application wasn't the best. I'm going to come in and just put a little bit of paint on my stick and then we'll do it. We'll spread it that way. That's a little bit safer. Give it a try over here. Yeah, it's better. So I'm going to come in with my white, drop it right onto the sand here. Got my white paint added, and I'm going to come in with my blow dryer, and I'm going to blow over the water and then back over the sand.
I've put a little bit too much white paint on it, as you can see, but so what I'm trying to do now is I'm trying to blow out the white so we get the sand underneath that water. So I'm kind of just blowing as much as I can off the edge. like a pretty rough sea there now not somewhere that I'd be wanting to swim but that's okay um, I think what I'm gonna do is just put in a little bit more of the waves that make it look like they're waiting on at the beach here so I'll just come in with my uh, white hair and I'm just gonna follow along some of these lines here and just make in some more waves Gonna make some of these a little bit bigger seeing as I made this so huge. Just go back in and add a little bit more weight up in here.
I've been letting this dry for a couple days just so I could hang it up on a wall to give you the whole effect. So this is something that if you're not a seasoned artist, it's okay because you can use all these fun techniques and get some great results. So as you remember in the sky, we just swiped across with some plastic and that made some nice cloud formations. And then the same with the beach scene. Now I did try to do a swipe with black over, wasn't really happy with the results. So I tried some more swiping, tried some more things, threw in some water to make some waves, and I've got another effect. And again, for the ocean, I came in with just a uh, baby crocker <laughs> icing, a little knife, whatever you want to call it, and used that to swipe across. And that gave some nice uh, blending of the water and then in with some waves, and there you have a finished beach landscape. So do give it a try. Don't be intimidated by thinking, I can't paint, because these kind of techniques, you'll be able to do it. Have fun with it. Until next time, bye-bye.